Well, good morning, church. Um, sorry for left you in a bit of a uh, lurch yesterday. Um, decided I just needed to unplug entirely, take the day off. And uh, so um, appreciate your understanding in that. Uh, but we're back. And uh, following the, the excitement, the joy of Easter, um, I think um, going back into um, the, the armor of God, remembering the battle that we're in. We paused, took a break, I think very timely, um, talking about um, putting on shoes for our feet, having the, the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Um, that's where we kind of took our, our pause and go, what is this gospel of peace? And, and had the opportunity to just take um, the Passion Week, the Holy Week, looking at the sacrifice of Christ and all that he has done and his um, resurrection on our behalf as this great guarantee for us. Um, what a what a joy, what an amazing uh, promise and hope we have. And obviously that continues to play into um, the armor of God and all that it means for us. So following um, the shoes, the readiness, the gospel of peace, then back in Ephesians chapter 6, um, verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. The shield of faith. Faith is something that our culture somehow um, talks a lot about. Um, and, and you'll see it all over Facebook. You'll hear it on the secular radio station, um, whatever other access you have to the outside world in your isolation. Um, just have faith. Just believe. Well, believe in what? Right? Have faith in Faith, that's, that's nothing. That's, it's empty and hollow. In fact, it's less than hollow. It's, it's idolatry. Um, Commanded to have faith, but, but faith isn't just some grasping at unknown, some vague hope that everything will turn out all right. Um, faith is only as good as whatever it's placed in. Faith is a belief that has to have an object. What's the object of your belief? So we're to take up the shield of faith. Trusting in something is our shield. Now, um, the shield here, there, there are a number of different Roman shields. Um, you've seen, I think, in, in, in many pictures, the, the, the small round shield that was often used in, in hand-to-hand combat. Um, but if you remember the, the context here, he's, uh, he seems to be talking about this idea of phalanx warfare, that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder united units standing together, which is such a beautiful picture of the church. And uh, and the shield here is Thurios. It's this massive, um, probably three foot by four foot shield. Um, and, and you think like the big, massive riot gear shield um, that they would, they would link together side by side and, and settle down and, and it would, it would cover them. It would block the entire front line of their advance. Um, that's the shield he's talking about. It was um, they were often soaked, uh, covered in leather, soaked in water, so that it, in case the enemy shot flaming darts, it would it would extinguish those. It was they it was their defense. It was what they hid behind, and so we're to hide behind faith, but but not some general vague idea of faith. Um, Hebrews eleven um, obviously talks about faith in detail. And verse 6 says, without faith is impossible to please him, to please God. Forever who would draw, for whoever would draw near to God must believe. Believe what? Here's what faith is. Here's the object of our faith. Believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. He exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Our faith, our, our shield, our protection is believing God is there, and God rewards those who seek Him, who obey Him. It's better to obey. Remember, that's the, um, the context of Ephesians 6. Paul has laid out these gospel truths. He's made these commands live this way. This is what your marriage should look like. This is what your job should look like. Um, this is what your church should look like. This is how your family should operate. Um, walk in obedience, um, because He rewards those who seek Him. He rewards those who... Who trust him and so as the enemy shoots these flaming darts of, of 
doubt and uncertainty and fear and wondering. I'm going to take up the shield of faith and to trust him, trust that it would be good to obey. It will be better if I trust him. Now, notice um, the shield doesn't stop the darts from flying. The darts still come, but it extinguishes those darts. And so if you continue through Hebrews 11, um, you'll be reminded uh, of what it looks like that those darts continue to fly. He talks about those who suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, um, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and dens in the earth. Um, all these, though commended through their faith, um, did not receive what was promised. They were still hoping for the Messiah to come. They were still looking forward to that great reward, that which we now look back at, anticipating his return. Um, but here's the point. Um, faith does not stop the trial. Faith gives us hope in it. Faith gives us protection from those darts so that they continue to fly, but they do not wound us. They do not uh, penetrate uh, our defense. So church, have faith. Believe God is who he says he is. Take him at his word. Trust that it is better that those uh, who lose their life for, for his sake will save it. Because he's good. And he is trustworthy. That's what our faith ought to look like. That's the shield that protects us, that keeps us from being wounded and injured by the attacks of the enemy. Trust the Lord. Have faith. Trust in him that he rewards those who seek him. I love you, church. Continue to pray for you, and we'll see you tomorrow.